स्टार्टिंग विथ चैप्टर नंबर वन ऑन किया है वी आर स्टार्टिंग विथ चैप्टर नंबर वन चैप्टर नंबर वन का नाम है इंट्रोडक्शन टू एनालिस ठीक है Now this is the most important chapter because in this chapter you will be studying the basic concepts of analysis. अगर तुमको ये particular chapter नहीं समझा, तो you will not understand anything throughout the syllabus. And that is why you should pay good attention to this chapter. अभी सबसे पहला topic इधर है 1.1 algorithm and algorithmics. Now how do you define an algorithm? An algorithm is simply an english like representation of a program so when you write steps of a program in english like language wo kya ban jata hai algorithm all right theek hai you can answer my question so that becomes an algorithm now there is another way of defining an algorithm an algorithm is a set of operations which performs one particular task so basically when you perform certain operations ओके टू परफॉर्म वन पर्टिकुलर टास्क तो बन जाता है एल्गोरिथम नाउ दो ऑपरेशन में परफॉर्म द टास्क ऑफ फाइंडिंग फैक्टोरियल ऑफ अ नंबर और द टास्क कुड बी रिपेयरिंग दिस फैन और द टास्क कुड बी फिक्सिंग अ बल्ब एनीथिंग सो वेन एवर यू राइट अ सेट ऑफ ऑपरेशन टू परफॉर्म वन पर्टिकुलर टास्क तो वो क्या बन जाता है एल्गोरिथम ठीक है अभी एल्गोरिथमिक्स का क्या मतलब है एल्गोरिथमिक्स का मतलब है स्टडी ऑफ एल्गोरिथम्स खत्म सो इन एल्गोरिथमिक्स वील बेसिकली फर्स्ट नो द वर्किंग ऑफ द एल्गोरिथम एंड देन वी विल स्टडी हाउ टू एनालाइज द एल्गोरिथम ऑफ कोर्स एनालिसिस का मतलब तुमको ये पता नहीं है सो दैट यू विल कम टू नो वेरी शॉर्टली ओके नाउ थ्रू आउट द एंटायर लेक्चर वी विल यूज दिस वर्ड वेरी ऑफन व्हिच वर्ड इंस्टेंस हां इंस्टेंस ऑफ अ प्रॉब्लम इंस्टेंस इंस्टेंस का मतलब होता है वैलिड इनपुट क्या मतलब होता है वैलिड इनपुट वैलिड इनपुट अब इसका क्या मतलब होता है व्हाट दैट मीन नाउ लेट्स टेक एग्जांपल ऑफ अ प्रोग्राम टू फाइंड फैक्टोरियल ऑफ अ नंबर नाउ इफ दिस इज द प्रोग्राम यू विल टेक इनपुट फ्रॉम द यूजर इफ द यूजर गिव्स इनपुट एन इक्वल टू टू वॉट शुड बी द आउटपुट टू थ्री माइनस एट इन वैलिड सी वेन यू आर राइटिंग अ प्रोग्राम टू फाइंड फैक्टोरियल ऑफ अ नंबर देन द इनपुट ऑफ माइनस एट इज इन वैलिड बिकॉज फैक्टोरियल इज ऑलवेज काउंट फॉर नंबर ग्रेटर देन और इक्वल टू जीरो जीरो समझ में आया ऑल राइट सो फॉर द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ फाइंडिंग फैक्टोरियल ऑफ अ नंबर एन इक्वल टू माइनस एट इज एन इन वैलिड इनपुट In other words, minus eight is not an instance. instance of the problem. So here onwards, whenever this word comes in front of you, instance, just remember two words: valid, valid input. What two words? Valid, valid input. input. Okay. Now the next topic over here is the complexity or efficiency of an algorithm. Now throughout the entire lecture, we will use the words complexity, efficiency, equivalently. First of all, we need to understand the meaning of time complexity. Then we need to understand the meaning of space complexity, and then we will understand the meaning of complexity. Now, what does this mean? Very simple. The time complexity of the algorithm is simply the amount of time it takes to execute. Repeat with me. The time complexity of an algorithm is simply the amount of time it takes to execute. Now, we'll talk a little about this definition. But before that, I'm going to tell you something very, very, very important. Please pay attention to this. Something very simple but very important. In this entire lecture. Whenever I say the word algorithm, whenever I say the word program, whenever I say the word technique, it would mean one and the same. <laughs> See, normally in your semester two, you used to write algorithm in which language? English. English. English and programming. 
but that is not the case now. In this subject, whenever somebody says algorithm or whenever somebody says program, it means one and the same. same. Both mean one and the same. Okay, that is very important. Huh? So, whenever I say algorithm or program or technique, it means the same. There will be one or two topics where they would not mean same, algorithm and program. So, that time I will tell you, okay, now these two mean different. But otherwise, their meanings would be same. Now, coming back to this, what is the meaning of time complexity? Very simple. It is the amount of time a program and algorithm takes to execute. So, in very simple words, time complexity is nothing but execution time. What time? Execution time. Then you should understand the meaning of space complexity. The space complexity of an algorithm, of a program, is the amount of memory it consumes during its execution. See, whenever you execute any program, it will require some amount of memory. 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 So, the amount of memory it will consume is called its space, space, space complexity. complexity. Finally, the complexity of the algorithm is a combination of its time complexity and space, 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 complexity. space complexity. Do you understand that? Yes. Take care. Now, we have to understand a very important term. What is the meaning of analyzing an algorithm? Now, today onwards, understand one thing. If somebody tells you, go analyze that algorithm. So, analyzing an algorithm means finding the complexity of the algorithm. What it means? Finding, finding the complexity of the algorithm. So, although this is there in your notes, we might as well write it in the book. Okay, so write it preferably with some highlighted ink. I'll write it right. <coughs> Analyzing an algorithm means <coughs> Analyzing an algorithm means Finding its complexity In bracket you write time and space. Now give the third heading 1.3 methods to determine complexity of an algorithm. the methods, the techniques to determine complexity of the algorithm but before that we need to understand something else. Very quickly tell me what is the meaning of analyzing an algorithm? Alright, now let's understand the next thing, very interesting we are doing. Now the next question is why should we analyze an algorithm? Why, why, why should we analyze an algorithm? Interesting, eh? so no. Now what happens is Whenever any software is designed in the real world, for that software, very often there are multiple algorithms available. Let's take a very simple example of finding factorial of a number. If you look at this and this algorithm a little closely, you will realize both of them will give you the factorial of the number. This is non-recursive and that is recursive. Do you remember that? Yes. yes sir. Given the same input, will they produce the same output? Yes. 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 So that is not even a question in this particular syllabus. Given the same input, they will produce the same output. Now, if they produce the same output, then the question is, which of them to use in the real world? The question is, which of them to use in the real world? And the answer is, use that algorithm, that technique, which is the most efficient. efficient. That means use that algorithm, use that technique which takes lesser time, 
or lesser memory or both. Do you understand this? Okay, keep listening. Now, whenever you want to decide which algorithm to use, okay, the first thing is you have to determine your factor for determining efficiency. I repeat myself, you have to first decide that what is your factor of determining efficiency. Whether you want an algorithm which takes minimum time or whether you want an algorithm which takes minimum space. space. Now what happens is the concept of efficiency okay, varies from person to person. Now to explain that to you, let's take an example, let's take a situation, be very attentive. Let's take example of two algorithms, we'll talk in general. Let's take example of two algorithms, one is A1 algorithm 1, another is A2 algorithm 2. Given the same input, they will produce the same. <coughs> okay, so we have to find out now who is more efficient. Now let's say each of them has a particular property. Let's say A1 takes minimum time to execute. So its execution time is minimum. Let's say A2 takes minimum memory space to execute. So if you didn't understand, this takes lesser time but maybe more memory. This takes lesser memory, but maybe more time. Now, let's consider a situation in which you are designing, in which you are designing a missile defense software. What software? Missile defense software. Such softwares actually exist in the real world. Now, let's understand what that software is. An enemy has fired a missile on your country. Your missile defense software will detect the incoming missile and will fire its own missile. Then your missile will destroy the enemy missile mid-air before it falls on you. Do you understand this? Yes. Enemy fires a missile on your country. Your software first detects the incoming missile, fires its own missile and then destroys the enemy missile mid-air before it falls on you. Now, this is the software you want to design. You will select A1 or A2. A1. A1. Okay, because you will require an algorithm which executes in minimum time. Barabar? Yes. Do, you execute, do you understand that? But, let's say your software does not deal with such a serious situation. Your software does not deal with a serious situation. And let's say you are running very low on memory. So you would obviously need algorithms which take minimum space. space. You may think that okay, if it takes one minute more, it's okay. But I need an algorithm which takes minimum space. So first of all, depending on the situation, you have to decide what factor is more important to you, whether it is time or space. space. Do you understand that? Yes. And then you have to decide and then you have to find out who is more efficient? Who takes minimum time? Who takes minimum space? And then you select that algorithm. So, where we started, the discussion started this way, that why do you need to analyze the algorithm? So, you need to analyze the algorithm to find out who is more efficient. efficient. But first decide what is efficiency for you, whether it is time or space. Do you understand that? Very shortly, we will eliminate one of these two factors. And then throughout the entire chapter, we will go ahead with only one of these two factors. Alright. Now coming back to this heading 1.3. Read it loudly. There are two methods, there are two approaches to find out the complexity of the algorithm. The first approach is called empirical or posterior approach. And the second approach is called theoretical or mathematical or prior eye approach. Throughout the syllabus, we will be using this, sorry, we will be using the second approach. But still, we need to understand what exactly they mean. Okay, so we will write a little, come on, right. The following, the following are the two approaches
of determining <coughs> efficiency of an algorithm. Now give the first heading A. The empirical or posterior eye approach. Okay, I'll dictate something first write and then we'll discuss this right. Before you start writing, let me tell you something very important. In this definition, you will see two words. You will write two words, algorithm and program. And in this definition, they would mean different. If it is same, I will never tell you. If it is same, I will never tell you. I will tell you only when they are different. Okay, right. Pay attention when writing. In this approach, in this approach, All the competing algorithms are first converted into programs and then Their complexities are measured by trying various instances on them. Take a few seconds, go through the definition in your mind. In this approach, all the competing algorithms are converted into programs and then their complexities are measured by trying various instances on them. List. Now let's say there are five algorithms A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. Given the same input, they produce the same output. So we want to decide who is most efficient. First of all, you decide your factor of efficiency. So let's say for you execution time is important. Okay. So you want that algorithm which will execute faster. But the thing is you can measure the execution time only after converting the algorithm to program. program. Okay. Here the words algorithm and program do not mean same. So what that definition says, it says that first you convert each and every algorithm, each and every algorithm to a program. So A1 will be converted to P1, A2, P2, P3, P4, P5, alright. Then what you do, you try various instances on them. What is the meaning of the word instance? Valid. Valid. Valid so you try valid input, the same valid input on each of them. And you measure, actually measure how much time they take. Alright, there are certain library functions with the help of which you can measure the execution time. Now let's say after doing all that, you come to know that P2 takes a minimum time. If you come to know that P2 takes minimum time, 
then what you do is you select the algorithm A2, you use it in the real world and you discard all others. So this technique is called empirical approach. Can you tell me what is the disadvantage of this technique? Very good. You are wasting your time in converting how many algorithms to program? Your, your, your. I will say four. Because one you are using. So that time is not wasted. But all others you are eventually discarding. So what is happening is you have wasted your time in converting four algorithms into programs which later on you are not using. Do you understand what I am saying? So that's why this technique is not used in the real world. Now have a look at this word also. What approach? Posterior. What is the meaning of posterior in normal English? Posterior means later on, afterwards. Can you tell me why the word posterior is used over here? Very good. Because we, because we find the complexity of the algorithm after converting them to programs. Do you understand that? So if you are really attentive, can you tell me what will happen in prior eye approach? Before the algorithm. Yes, you will find out the efficiency of the algorithm before converting, the algorithm. before converting the algorithm to program. And that way this disadvantage will not be there. Do you understand that? Okay, now with the next heading B, the theoretical or mathematical or prior approach. Right, right, definition, right. This approach mathematically determines the quantity of resources required by each algorithm <coughs> as a function of size of the instance. Underline few words, underline the word resources, underline size of the instance. <coughs> Listen. Now, we will discuss that definition after 5 minutes. First of all, what is the meaning of the word resource in that definition? In that definition, the word resource could mean either time or space, that means memory. It could mean either time or memory. Alright, okay. So, resource could be execution time or memory space, anything. Now, what is the meaning of this size of the instance? Pay good attention, okay. We will be using it throughout the syllabus. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of size of the instance? We will be using it throughout the entire chapter. Size of the instance means the number of elements on which your program will work. Repeat. It means, repeat, the number of elements on which your program will work. Let me see. Let's say you are doing a quick sort program. Hmm. And your quick sort program is sorting 28 elements. 28. 
So tell me what is the size of the instance? 28. 28. As simple as that. Because your program worked on how many elements? 28. 28. Instance means what? Instance. Validity. Validity. So size of the instance means number of elements in that valid input. Or a better way of understanding, the number of elements on which your program works. If you still don't understand, listen. Whenever you do see programming, in many programs you use a variable n. Do you know that? Yes. Normally, normally that variable n stores what? Number. number of elements. What it shows? Number of elements. So that number of elements in this subject is known as what? Size, size of the instance. Yes. So size of the instance is nothing but this n, the number of elements. Do you understand? Copy these two lines. Thank <laughs> you. 